Hey, welcome to Hearing God's Voice podcast, and I really am excited. This is one of the first women to be on the podcast, not by design, just the way that the cards fell, uh, but I'm so excited for you to meet Valerie, a good friend of mine, but in turn, someone who is absolutely a good friend of God, a woman who is doing life transformation, and she's one that's got quite a history, so before I waste time telling you about her, let me introduce you to her. Valerie Gall, how are you, dear? It's good to have you on today at the Hearing God Voice podcast. Jeffrey, I am really honored to be here. I'm excited anytime we can talk about God and how it could how he can be playing a bigger role in people's lives. And I'm all I'm all about it. You know, sign me up. <laughs> so thanks for having me. It's good to have you here. I, I really want to get into this today because you know the, the hearing God, God voice is a very um abstract thing for a lot of people. Uh, they may think it's just reading the Bible. They might just think it's a uh, journaling. They might think it's uh, whatever it might be. But God's word is an embellishment of the whole person, the wellness. You know, uh, 3 John 2 says, you know, I pray that you are well in body, mind, as well as your soul prospers. You do a major part of that because you train people how to live their life in the spiritual realm. Give a little backdrop of what you have been called to in the ministry that you perform for so many people. I was a professional athlete for many years and competed at an international level. Part of my testimony, if you ever, if you want me to share that at some point, I can. Mm -hmm. um, I just was like, there's got to be more than this. But I was so attracted to life transformation programs and books and how do you achieve how do you change your story how do you overcome obstacles how do you win you know i was all about winning because winning was part of my identity if i'm not the best then i'm not anybody but again that's part of my story and that's not true um but i just got to that point in my spiritual walk where the lord showed me who he was and that um he wants everybody to win so there can't be just one winner. That's the way the world does it. That's the way the enemy wants you to look at the world is that you want to be above everybody. I got to this point, even when I was on a TV show, American Gladiators for um, two seasons, and I wanted the contestants to win. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted, I was like praying that everybody would have a great you know, outcome. And I'm like, I'm not even a gladiator at this point because I want everybody to win. So the Lord showed me I could use this skill set that I have um, in fitness and nutrition and motivation. I love to do motivational coaching and speaking and actually create a life transformation coaching program based on his word, which is really what, you know, the everything that we do is based on godly principles and how do we live that out in our life. So that's the nutshell version. I could go into any area that you'd like me to expand. I, I I remember watching you on the Gladiators and uh, you know knowing you for so you know so long ago when you were there, it was like pretty exciting. But I love what you said, and I want to go back to hear that again. It just wasn't enough, yeah. and that you know rings true to my life in in my career you know structure of what the Lord had allowed me to go through and to pull me out of. What did you find? What was the what was the whisper that called you into that in a more intimate level of spirituality and Christian lifestyle? When you get to a, to a high level of achievement, um, for me that was in the fitness industry. I was um, I went from competing in IFBB Pro Figure competitions and did very well with that, and then I ended up getting that role on the American Gladiator TV show on NBC, which you know you would think as as a kid growing up, if you wanted to be famous, you know, here it is. This is, I've, I've arrived, right? Yeah, yeah. And I had a lot of magazine covers and whatnot along the way, but each time I had hit like a new milestone, it, there was such a deflation, like, okay, I won this trophy. Okay, I'm on the cover of this magazine. Okay, I'm on that magazine. Okay, now I'm on a TV show. And at every level, um, I felt like they're like, is this it all there is? Because I, I can't keep running. This is a hard game to play. And you have to kind of be somebody else to almost, you know, one up your last game and put out a persona that you're perfect and this you have it all together. And I, I was so exhausted with that. And it just got to the point where I thought this can't be, this can't be the right way to do things because I don't feel enough. And I've already gotten to the top of what I thought was the top. Yeah. So I had to backtrack and say, 
almost like the car, I was on a magic carpet ride and the carpet fell out and I just like fell to the ground, like spiritually. I was empty and broken and searching for something else saying, do I even belong here? What's the point of even being here if I, you know, don't even feel worthy at this high level of achievement being, you know, a national TV. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I really dug in. I was already spiritually seeking reading lots of different religious books, whatever, just anything, spiritual growth. But I had that deeper, in, like I needed the savior, didn't know it. And I said, God, if you're real, I've read all about things about you, but if you're real, like I need you to show me in three ways that I can't miss that are blatant signs because I'm ready to check out. I just can't keep this game going, I'm exhausted. And that's when I met three pastors in two weeks and got you know, heard the gospel and gave my life to Christ and got baptized about a month later. And ever since then, I realized that you're never going to feel, at least in my opinion, based on what I've learned, I will never feel enough from a worldly perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to feel enough if I know who I am in Christ and my identity is in him. And, and that he levels out the playing field. Like there's not one person he loves more or less than anyone else. And there's nothing you can do to earn it. I don't have to do all these tricks and schemes and pretend I'm somebody I'm not to have love from a heavenly father. So that's really, I wanted everybody to know that. Mm. That's kind of where oh. I'm at. Well, see, that, that just follows suit in so many of the biblical principles of characters in the Bible. The reality is people that think sitting in the TV, on the other side of the TV set, that thinks that everybody's in TV or movies have it all together. And uh, people Usually think the people have money. Oh, it truly is. And <laughs> all the celebrities I've worked on, I know that to be true. And if you have all the money, you'd be happy. But you said something, and it reminds me of a scripture that says, come for those that are hungry, and I have that food of life for you. And when you eat that food, not the ego, the pride, and everything else, and it doesn't matter. There's people that are wonderful that are in the movies and the TV that are doing well for the Lord too, but the number is much more narrow because of the drive you described. But in turn, once you taste the, the spirit of the Lord speaking to you, guiding you, leading you, and then giving you three fleeces, that is like so Gideon. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But the reality to, for the listening audience is that he'll do that for anybody. It's not yes. like you have to be at a, at a plateau or you have to be good enough. It's like everybody he loves the same across the board. He has no favoritism. That's right. That's so right. Blessing. It's so true. And that's the best part in the it's the bad news for those who are competing against the world, <laughs> but it's the best, the best news. This is one, I have a lot of favorite scriptures, but this one is on my desk, Second Chronicles 7, 14. I make these into power cards so you can like have the verse and then I summarize the verse and that way we can do exercise to it. So we can use it as like rep counts instead of talk, instead of saying numbers, we count with words. So just my people who are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, which we think wicked is like murder. Well, that's wicked, but so is selfish ambition and ego and, you know, things like that. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's just one of the places where God shows you all you got to do, turn to him and he will answer you. He says, I hear you, but you just have to come to him in a humble place, which is hard to do sometimes, right? Humble. You know, you said also false images. You know, that's the very thing that uh, I think that we don't realize from birth. And even before birth, it's been proven uh, psychologically that if a parent says, I want to abort this child, or I hate this child, I wish I never had this child. But as we come out of the womb, the words that are spoken to us are constantly creating images. And it only takes you about six years old before they say the form of our character or the form of our image in our mind is really kind of pretty steadfast by 80%. You had, you said, a false image. And it's we do a program called Makeover, 21 Day Makeover, that I'll be telling you about soon. But the reality is, is we have a mirror and it's an exercise that we break that mirror. Yeah. And they break that mirror so that that's the old self. That's the Second Corinthians 5, 13, 17 that says, I'm a new creation. Yes. The problem, and I think that I'd like to tap into this, into your life, you know, coaching insights that you give us. The problem is people start 
exercise programs. People start Bible studies. People start New Year's resolutions, and they don't maintain it. They start a relationship with Christ, and they let it just dull, and that first love affair just goes kind of flatlined. The reality of exercise so much to me parallels the biblical principles of disciplining, of hearing God's voice, of journaling, of really being all that God has called you to be. And I'd like to hear how you tie that into the life experience training and, and transformation you work with, because I know you transform a lot of lives. Yeah. Well, it starts, like you said, with the person in the mirror. And when you realize that I mean, that's kind of the word the Lord gave me many times, like stop trying to change everybody else. Your life will be an example of your relationship with me. And so focus on your relationship with me and you will be an example and it will just permeate other people. So I know it's kind of, it seems opposite of what, when you're in God, you want to oh, focus on everybody else and be servant driven, which is but you have to first start with that person in the mirror. You do have to break up the old self and that image that you carry around because it's been tainted over the years by sin and lies and bondage to, you know, who knows what, what was spoken into you. Like I was considered to be aborted because my parents were teenage parents. So I was told that by one of the parents. And of course that led to me having to prove myself like, oh, look at what I won. Am I good enough yet? Am I good enough yet? Not knowing that's what I was doing. So, and that can still rear up, but you have to constantly address the old self that wants to stay alive, even though it doesn't serve you or others. And that means you have to have a, a game plan. It's just like anything, it's war. I mean, we're, we're doing spiritual warfare here. The enemy wants you to stay in his camp of lies that you are nobody, no good, not enough. And then the, God wants you to know, I created you with a purpose, handcrafted in you and knitted you in your mother's womb. And I have chosen you for such a time as this, right? And I love you. How do you re reconcile these two? Well, if you don't have a war plan, the enemy's going to win. It's just, he has a loud voice on this earth because this is his domain right now. <laughs> but if we have a war plan, then we have scriptures specifically that we would pick out. I already have a list that I've put together, I compiled from different sources of your identity in Christ affirmations. And I also kind of come up with some of my own, but they're all Bible verses. And it's basically your identity inventory. So your false identity is on this side. This is the lie and your true identity is on this side. And what you do, this is one of the things that we do in our warrior program is you read this every day out loud. Now, what we do is also record it. So you can be playing it while you're doing dishes or in the car or, you know, getting ready in the morning. And the whole point is saying, I am enough. Instead of not enough being the false identity, you say, I am enough. I am the salt of the earth, the light of the world and the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I have the scripture, you know, verses there, but it's a whole list of I am statements based on who God says you are when you're in Christ. And that's a great way to kind of cover yourself in the morning. Another thing we do is we put on our armor of God. So the Ephesians 6, 10 verses, um, basically, you know, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the gains of the devil. And we go through the whole scripture and we put on our helmet of salvation and our sword of the spirit because we know that the enemy is not happy when <laughs> you want to serve right. God and help others know God. So he's going to throw things at you like, a word through your spouse or, you know, a temper tantrum through your child or a bank account that didn't, you know, didn't have as much money as you thought it was or a failed business deal. All these things are just arrows, fiery darts. But if you have your shield of faith and your helmet of salvation and your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, you're more likely to win those battles. And uh, another thing we do, so we have a mindset focus, training your brain to think like Christ, because it says that in one of the I think it's second Corinthians. What is it? Um, I have the mind of Christ. Second, first Corinthians two sixteen. Two sixteen. There you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. the mind of Christ. So that's another way to protect yourself. Um, and then we actually do workouts. So when I was an athlete, I would always, I would learned that if you focus on your goals while you're moving your body, you're more likely to achieve them. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of like sell your memory at the quantum level. 
And I didn't even understand it, but it was working. I was achieving these like levels of success so fast. I was just nobody. I was just your regular next door girl, you know what I mean? From Cleveland, Ohio. And I thought, well, if that could work, even though I didn't know God, what if we just did that with Bible verses? Why not work out to the word? Because if the word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of your heart, boom, what a great way. And it's the bread of life, like you said, right? So if we're eating God's word while we're exercising, you burn it into your cellular memory. Now you go out the door and it's right on your conscious mind. It's right at the tip of your tongue. So you're going to make better choices and have a better time defending yourself against the attacks. So that's just a small snippet. But the thing we're working on right now is life integration. Like not Bible study over here, exercise over here, husband and children over here. To me, you can work on any of those areas. And I've done that before. You sign up for a program for a short time and you make progress. But then other areas of your life kind of fall by the wayside. And then you have to train wreck, clean it all up, and then focus on those areas. And then that area you focused on now is by the wayside. So it's like, this is, this is a broken model. We've got to find a way to actually integrate these things so that when you work on one thing, you're working on all things. So our new focus is having a virtue of the month. And like right now we're purification, detox, same thing, right? Pure in body, pure in spirit, pure in mind. Now, what does that look like in how you eat? What does that look like in how you spend your money and your budget? What does purification look like in your marriage? What things can you remove that are causing you tension? So we're just taking that one concept and looking at every area of life. That seems a little more practical to me because now we're integrating and not separating. So that was a long answer, but you know, once no, again, I'm perfect. Little- Perfect answer because in my heart and in hearing the voice of God ministry, the reality is wholeness, the whole being, the, the total. And I agree with what you just said. You know, you got a lot of sick Christians emotionally. Right. You got a lot of sick mentally. And I don't mean mental uh, disarrangement. I mean mentally that they can't take captive a thought. And you have some of them that are eating to their death. And so when, when you really study the scripture as you have, you start to realize that God has put together the perfect ultimate operating system. And you know who caught this, but they didn't know it was the Hebrews, the Jews, because the nutritional menu that is in the Bible is today. Dr. Mark Hyman, I think is ripping off that. I don't mean ripping off, but he's utilizing that in functional medicine because it's no secret. Uh, I, I used to teach the uh, Maker's Maker's Way, the Maker's Diet, and uh, Reuben Jordan was the the author of that, and it was amazing. And he confessed it out. For, this is all from the scriptures, but we don't see the scriptures that way. We we seem to see it from a pulpit. We seem to see it from a Bible study. We seem to see it with a few people like uh, you know yourself or others that are really maybe on fire for it. But it's the operating system to live abundant life. And, you know, you quoted John 10, 10 earlier that says that the robber, the thief comes to kill and destroy everything, everything that we have. But it says, especially in the Amplified Version, I have come, Christ speaking, I have come to give you life and life abundant to live here on this earth as it is in heaven, as well as in heaven for eternity. When we get a hold of that and break through the false images Life changes. I don't mean that everything goes pearly, you know, pearly gates and perfect. You and I know that, that that's not true. And that's another misinterpretation. But we can be in the midst of the battle or storm and stand strong and stand at peace and stand at joy and stand healthy and stand well. If we're doing very much of what you teach and coach and what David did when he had that emotional breakdown, so many he had, he said to his soul, oh, my soul, speaking to his soul. Why are you so downcast? Praise the Lord and give glory and count the blessings of when he has been there and he's never left or forsake you. And then he's transformed from that point. And I, I mean, I'm just thrilled with what you said about the workout because I can only imagine the more you've put in of the scriptures, the more power your body receives 
from the real spiritual strength, which is Christ and the Holy Spirit within you. So you've got a, you've got really a new leaf in life transformation. I'm just thrilled with. Yeah, it's pretty amazing because nobody thinks of this. And I'm thinking, how has nobody launched it? And it's taken me a really long time to like make it more mainstream. I've taught classes on it for a couple of years. And still, like, I can't work out without it. It's the most boring thing. I cannot, I hate working out unless I have, unless I'm hiking somewhere. But having God's word as my mantra for the whole workout, it just keeps me not focused on the time, you know, am I done yet? Or how it's many just, reps? Yeah, how many reps? Because you want to quit before you get to 10. But when you're reading God's word, you're not going to quit on those. But you you become what you speak about all the time. It's a creative force. So you're looking at it, you're, I mean, it's infusing it into your cellular memory and you don't even realize the impact it has, but you know, the amount of testimonies we have just from people doing that, it's so simple. It really is not, you know, revolutionary by any means. Um, I believe God gave me the idea. Uh, well, but you know, still, God gave, God gave that idea to an 80 year old man. He gave it to Joshua when he said in Joshua one verses five through nine, meditate on these things day and night meditate on them and remember that i am with you and then he went and took over the promised land yeah. so you 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 are absolutely right it is a biblical principle from the beginning of time on, right. for, on and it says they said right i mean he told the hebrews to put the scriptures on your forehead and wrap them at you know on as a frontlet i mean they mm -hmm. literally did put the scroll like little tiny scrolls in, in these little leather pouches but mm -hmm. what he means is to write it by reciting it every day, by saying it out loud so that it's so part of you, you can't even, it's just how you think, it's just how you speak, right? Yes. So if we all need help, we're watching the media all day and we're seeing commercials and we're seeing news and we're seeing shows and we're watching billboards and we're hearing radio. The enemy has got a lot of our mind space. Um, mm. If we don't do this, I, I think we're doomed. You know, we're doomed for uh, a spin cycle of uh, a lot of really d difficult things. I think that it's so important that the audience realizes what you have put together uh, is is really based on all biblical principles, yeah. life experience. You didn't read a book and now you're doing it. You're doing it because you're doing it because you were taught by the spirit to do it. You hear the voice of God through the scriptures and through the, the realm of voice within you that it continues to lead you. I can see the spark in your eyes uh, for those that are watching us on YouTube right at the moment. But in turn, I think that it's really important that the message begins because I've heard this in a number of the interviews I've done in the last short period of time, that this wholeness, and I've interviewed some of the incredible, incredible people like yourself that have heard the same voice. God wants the wholeness of his people. He wants a strong people. He wants a, you know, a faith bearing people fighting the fight that you talked about. Similar to what the false image of, you know, there's no devil. There's no battle. It's just a bad day. And that's a lie that we as knowledgeable Christians need to bring forward to our minds, as you said. Right. It is a battle. You know, Paul said, and then you quoted it just earlier in, a, in Ephesians 6, he said, this is warfare. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against your husband and wife. It may seem that way at times, but it's not. It's against spiritual principalities that are powerful. And, you know, it stopped when Daniel prayed. It yeah. took 21 days for Michael, the archangel, who had to come and break loose the barriers but you have found a way, even in the exercise world and nutrition world, to break through. And the, and the word in the Hebrew is ba parezim. It's like the dam breaking through. You're showing that your, your students how to break through with the word of God and the application, the physical applications of eating and working out and, and living their life in Christ-like nature. That's exciting, exciting news. So tell us what you're doing with your, your course. I'm so excited. Well, first of all, I'm pumped that you mentioned the uh, Hebrew term for breakthrough, which is, what is it again? Baal Perezim. Baal Perezim. Yeah, so, David uh, made, made that name because he had a breakthrough with God. And it's just, I'll send you the scripture and the location of that because it's, uh, I did a whole teaching on it and it's powerful. It's powerful, especially when you study that word. Yeah, well, that is brilliant because Jeffrey, 
my heart right now is I keep seeking God at a deeper level. Like what now? What now? I mean, he walked me through that beginning walk of being a Christian. You don't really know. You're kind of relying on other people, how to pray and all that stuff. And just doing a little Bible study here and there. Well, I mean, I went all in and I was reading the word, but you know, over the time I've gotten more Bibles and you know, Bibles with uh, Greek and Hebrew translation and starting to learn. And I fell in love with, I just believe wholeheartedly he had sent me on a journey to, to discover Hebrew teachings because that's what the original Bible was written in, especially the Old Testament. They think that the New Testament was probably written in Hebrew, but they haven't found them yet. But the, that was God's divine language to his people. And yet these translations, we do what we can but, you know, especially when we go Hebrew to Greek to English. Mm. And I'm like, when I learned God's name in Hebrew and the meaning behind it, it not only has a sound, it has a numerical value and it has a pictograph meaning. And each of those pictures means something. And it's it just blew me away. And I've been sharing that with people. So one of the things that we're doing in our um, our new life planning system, we're calling it the war planner, is we're learning Hebrew letters and words every week. So on our weekly spread, we have a letter of the day and a, or a letter of the week and a Hebrew word of the week so that we can start to understand God at a deeper level. And the reason that I want to do this is because the more I learn about his original language, the more in love with him I become because he is so awesome. He is so smart. He is so clever. There's no human being that could have made this up. It just makes your faith grow exponentially. And I'm thinking, if this makes me go all in with the Lord, if I help other people learn this, because most people are not <laughs> going out there saying, I want to learn Hebrew, but he put that on my heart. So I have to do it. So I'm like, okay, if we can start sharing what the meaning of the Hebrew word breakthrough is, maybe we'll put that in our first series, mm -hmm. then they're going to understand God at a deeper level. And the more you understand God, the more you're on fire for his glory to do his work. So, Bringing that back to what we're doing is our Before mission. You hold, hold your yeah, thought ahead. just for one moment, because you, you, you're, you're on fire, and I want to I <laughs> keep saying that flame. Um, I interviewed uh, the leading rabbi in social media, Rabbi Friedman. Beautiful man, beautiful man. And he, em he embellishes and unpacks the, the Hebrew teachings like you just cannot imagine. And so I interviewed him. Now, this was a little challenge. We're talking about a Christian organization, Christ-centered, <laughs> and him. And he was all up for it. He was all up for it. Now, and he's we, not a, a Messiah-believing Jew, no, Rabbi? No. Okay. Right wow. Now. That was bold. <laughs> so he says, he, sa he says to me uh, about God's names, God's names. But do you know that especially the um, Orthodox Jews cannot speak his name? They can't even write his name. They would put G and D, but they right. won't put. They, we have Christ. And when the curtain was ripped, Valerie, you know this, we were given entry to commune, to relate, to, com to communicate and dialogue with God himself. Call him by name and he calls us beloved, his friend. That's where the love affair really begins. Versing knowing God in such incredible levels that they do in the Hebrew faith, but then coming to that place of intimacy that we have because of Christ Jesus and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't get better than this. Amen. But if we don't use it, if we don't fan into flame, it's like having a beautiful body and not working out or eating the bad stuff. Back to your your mainstream of, of care of people's transformation. If they're not taking care of that function, that function goes defunct. Right. And that's where we see Christians crashing and burning. And I'm all about restoring and renewing the body of Christ because that's who needs it more than anyone else right. because we got the opportunity. So tell me how you're doing that in the year 2021, the best year ever I'm claiming it to be. That's right. Me too. Me too. How cool is it that you interviewed Rabbi Friedman? Um, I've been following a rabbi, a rabbi who is a messianic believer just because he was raised with it. He's you know Jewish by culture. Um, he has so much understanding of the prophecies and the, you know, just the Torah itself, like how to, how, what this really meant. And I am being blown away, like a 90 minute sermon. I am getting a year's worth of sermons in a regular Christian church. Like I can't even, it's not even close. And so we need to like hit pause, write it down. Hit pause. I did a little session with our leaders when we were in Salt Fort Lake for a little retreat. 
We watched a sermon that was an hour and 45 minutes long. It took us five hours because it was so, so deep, you know, and we were like, okay, wait, let's look that up. And wait, what is he saying about this? And cross-referencing, that's Bible study, not just like a three-point quickie sermon, which is okay to get your feet wet. So when we dive in, um, we're, we're looking, we have four concepts for our mission. Um, I don't know if they're concepts or we kind of use the flow. This is my daughter, Trinity, by the way, my special little lady. So we have um, four statements as part of our mission, and that kind of guides how we do our war planner and everything else. And it's eyes up, rise up, get free, set free. So Mm -hmm. eyes up is seeking your heavenly father for wisdom and inspiration for this current season. Like, who is he? What is he doing now in your life? And then we seek, uh, then we have um, rise up. So we have our eyes up, now rise up in our identity in Christ. If we don't know who we are and we're not operating from the truth, then we're going to make a big bunch of messes over here. We're not going to bring God a lot of fruit and glory. So we need to rise up in our identity in Christ. And that's why we put on our armor, read our I am statements every day, right? And then we follow Jesus in all things. That leads us to the next get free is all about living your life with integrity from the word. So what the word says, how do we implement that in our life? Are we prioritizing our husband before our children, God before our husband, husband before our children, children before our community or our career? That needs to be in a proper order. And are we truly honoring God in our finances or are we just lip service you know, over here on the side? So that's about integrity and living out God's word, get free. Because if you don't get free, you're not going to be very productive in, in being bringing fruit because people are not going to recognize you. Your life is nothing to be talked about. Well, then the mm-hmm. set free part is where my heart really got. Um, this is when I heard the Lord, like I, I sought the Lord with all my heart, said, what burdens your heart? I want you to burden my heart for what burdens yours. And it was so clear with sex trafficking. I had never really thought about it before. I guess, you know, you hear it in passing, you think it's a third world country issue. No, it's a, it's an American issue. It's a worldwide issue. It's a billion dollar issue. And it's up right up there with guns and drugs as the highest number, you know, the top um, way to make money in the crime scene. So these children don't even realize what's, what's happening to them. And um, it's all over the place. It's in our backyard. So when he put that on my heart, I thought, if I'm not serving one of his, you know, precious chosen people who are being oppressed, because it says, help the widows, the orphans, the oppressed, the sick, the poor. If you're not helping them, you're really not a Christian. And I was like, like sliced at the heart. Like I'm teaching Bible study, but I am not serving the least of these. And when he says, when you're first you're last. And when you're last, you're first. And that's why he watched the disciples feet to show we're here to serve, not to be some boastful Pharisees out there saying, we know how to pray and we have a relationship with God, but they didn't want to go where all the sick people were and they didn't want to touch them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, here's our opportunity. We can't just be about life transformation. If we're not about serving God in in the, and helping the lives of those who can't help themselves. And that is something that is at the forefront of our mission so that 10% of everything that comes through our website goes directly to, we were serving a national organization called King's Ransom and we helped build a safe house. Uh, It was a $700,000 campaign. We raised about $3,500. And then now we're we're partnered up locally with Grace Haven, which is in Cleveland area. They have Toledo. Cincinnati, Columbus, but they just launched Cleveland and they need a lot of financial support right now. So we were able to um, refund our, or put our resources there and we're actually getting involved. Like I'm going to be doing education in schools to prevent it because that's the best way. But yeah. also um, we're helping with prayer. We're also, we made baskets for the girls. There's a lot of different things we can do. So that being said, um, we just, the best thing we can do is create a war plan every day to be able to stay on task with that mission. How do we see God our, you know, every morning and rise up in our identity in Christ, get free from the enemy's lies and live out a godly life so that we can set others free? Not so we can have great comforts. That's wonderful. That happens naturally when you're serving God. 
but it's not the goal. The goal, because comforts are going to be plentiful in heaven, right? But the goal is to set others free. And that means sharing the gospel. That means inter, you know, sharing these messages and sharing this link to this video so that more people can see that there's something beyond the veil that they are invited to participate in and they have a new identity. They're loved. And then more people we can be serving out there who are struggling, right? So I could you know, go people, on and on. <laughs> people, I love it. I mean, you, this is not your first visit because it's going to be many. We're going to have to have a continuation. Oh <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of invitations to you, Valley. But I want to I want to touch something that you said because you hear this. I'm probably especially because the the surroundings. It sounds like you have. When somebody really gets fallen in love with God, they want to be like God. They want to please God. You said you had sought out what God's pleasure was. When people say, what's my calling or what am I supposed to do or where am I supposed to go? There's a lot of roles that we play differently. But the Isaiah 61 scripture that is then repeated in Luke chapter 4, 18, 19. When Jesus got up in the Hebrew mm -hmm. temple, he stretched out that scroll and he read Isaiah 61 to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, the hearing to the deaf. That's the thing that we're all called to. And yes. that's making disciples out of all people who come to know Christ after they know Christ. The shortcoming, and then your next visit here, I want you to share more about this because it, I think it ties so beautifully with exercise and else. The issue is that when we get saved, many people think that's it. Yeah. We hit the mark. We're born again. And when things don't go all smooth, and in fact, when it gets worse because of the warfare that we're not equipped to fight, then suddenly we're we're in, in, in dire need of help. The body of Christ that already know Christ, they really have to hear what you're sharing because we need to know that we grow when we're helping others grow. And Jesus knew that from the very beginning. We grow when we're coaching others because if we're always being taught by the Spirit of God and by our, our, our mentors and we're always teaching, that's how the Hebrew rabbis brought the followers along. They would teach a follower and he would have to go find another follower to teach. Then he'd come back to the rabbi and learn from the rabbi, just like the disciples, and go out and do that very thing. That's the exercise of spiritual growth, is really the same thing when you're pushing that iron and that metal and growing and developing. That's how we grow in Christ. Read another Bible, read another book, read another seminar is not going to grow you until you put it into action. Right. And that, I think that's really what you're talking oh, about. Oh, it's beautiful. I love how you just said that because I kind of lost a little bit of track of that. One of our focuses is, you know, the, the is to duplicate, is to d disciple others to create more disciples. And so we wanted to look for leadership qualities in the groups that we have going in our tribe and then say, give them opportunities. So we have called quite a few people up who were probably like, what, why are you asking me? But we saw in them that they could. And boy, it was so beautiful when we saw that. That that happened through our challenge program. It was a 30 day program where we had small groups working together with one leader. And that's still how we do our coaching. And I'm coaching, um, like Marisa's in my coaching group, it's a coach to coach program. So I'm coaching them to the, they're going to be coaching these other small groups. And I forgot to mention that, but you know what? I love how you said when you teach it, like that's part of the transformation process. In fact, that's why I got into coaching. I heard somewhere along my journey, I don't even know who said it. You teach what you most need to learn. And when you teach something, you learn it at a greater level. And I thought, well, I want to coach people on transformation because it's going to be a constant mirror for me. If I'm always talking about it and always studying it and always teaching it, then I'm going to have to grow, period. It's like inevitable, right? So this makes sense that, that Jesus would teach his disciples to go out and make more disciples because then they get the word and the truth at a way deeper level than if they're just listening to him. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. It and when they fail and when they fail and they did. When yep. the 72 went, and when they fail, what they do? They came back and learn because we learn greater lessons in our failures than we'll ever learn in our successes. Although people don't want to believe that you had a success and you know that the learning skills there were not like the days that you were hitting bottom and saying, Lord, pull me out of this pit. That's where we learn the real intimacy of Christ and that hand that comes down that pulls us up. And like, we know we can always hold on to that because it'll never leave us or forsake us. 
I love that. I love that. You're right. We learn so much more through our failures. I still want to avoid failure. If you get me honest with you, I hate <laughs> losing. I hate failing. I hear you. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> Fail your way up. <laughs> well, we are going to share all the connections of your sites and your programs coming up with our audience. Uh, I always do this at the end of each uh, interview. Uh, I'm going to ask you to think about one thing, Jen, that you'll leave us with. But I want the audience to hear this. Like going to the gym. I don't want you to listen to this sharing, this 30 or 40 minutes sharing, and then turn it off and go off. James says that you look into the mirror intently, you get it, but then you walk away and immediately forget what, it's, what you saw in James 1, 22 through 25. I want you to re-listen to this. I want you to re-listen to this, and I want you to do what it said in Joshua, meditate on a day and night. Don't just hit another podcast. Take it in and allow it to nurture. You're going to find some things that Valerie shared that are going to be blowing you away and you thought you heard it all, but you didn't because it's just like the scriptures. When you read a scripture today, next week, next year, 10 years from now, it has such depth to it. It's got roots that will take you to a place that you can't even imagine. So re-listen to this. Back to you, Valerie. Tell us what's something you'd leave us, our audience with, to really just give them a charge to move forward in the, in the battle of the war. Well, like you said, I think, and I was just thinking it through while you were sharing that, um, it starts with one habit that you repeat every day. And that's the whole premise of our warrior challenge was just to master five habits, even if you're only going to start with one, but five was prayer, reading your Bible every day, um, journaling, uh, working out with putting on your armor, right? And these are all small things that you could add up to maybe half an hour, hour at the most every day. But if there was just one thing, I would say, pick out one scripture. You could do a search online if you want about scriptures that are on a certain topic that you need to have, you know, some growth in and just, and just speak that out every single day until you memorize it. And if it's going to take you a month, it takes you a month. If it takes you a week, um, if you could move your body to it, that would be ideal, but speak it out loud. Don't just read it on the paper. And if you have to post it in a couple places, do that. But it's just one thing that will actually make a difference for you for the rest of your life because that one scripture will be at the tip of your tongue. And when you need it, God will put it out there. You might need to speak it to somebody else. You never know. That sometimes is for other people. Sometimes it's for you. So if you can just memorize even blessed is she, like for, for the women out there, blessed is she who believed there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord, Luke 1 45. If you can walk around all day saying that you're going to have them blessings, right? So that would be my encouragement. Um, it also helps you hear from the Lord when you speak his word back to him, because it's the way he communicates with us. So you're going to get a lot more revelation that way. Please. So the life planner is a brand, this is brand new. It's not the first time I've made it. I always make life planners for myself and for, you know, as I coach clients, but this is the first time we're launching it with our real warrior program. And it's really phenomenal. Uh, we have literally pages for everything. You don't have to download all of them. Here's what we want to do. We're calling it a war planner. Really. It could be for guys too. We're probably going to, you know, make it, um, universal so any, anybody can use it it's at realwarriorwomen.com and we'll have a free a bunch of free downloads i want you to go there we're actually revamping our site right now so that we have a ton of free resources i love to make coaching tools how to manage your time priorities how to set goals all that stuff we're going to offer a bunch of it for free but we're also going to have a curriculum every month where you can focus on a specific area of life this january is purification or detox, not only physically, we have a meal plan, but also spiritually and mentally detox and apply it to every area of life. The war planner will have content specifically for that curriculum, as well as the daily planner. And you're gonna learn a Hebrew letter, Hebrew word, and a scripture every single week. We also provide you these power cards that we make, you know, where you can work out to them, um, four of those per month. And then we have coaching opportunities. So if people are like, hey, I'm not really good on my own, which I'm not. To be honest, Jeffrey, <laughs> I'm way better when I have accountability. Even as a coach, I need a coach and I need a team of people to keep me accountable. That's what we offer in our tribe is different levels of coaching accountability for you to help you, you know, you know, stay on task with what you say you're going to do. So if you could at least go 
to our site and sign up to be on our email list. And I would love to come back whenever you would love to have me, Jeffrey. I, you know, we could talk about God for days. <laughs> well, I'm going to say so something. Good. In all honesty, Valerie, I'm going to have you on regularly. I, uh, we're planning a, uh, a, and this is kind of breaking news to my audience right at the moment, but we're planning a live stream three-day retreat. And I'm inviting a lot of the people like yourself that have podcasted over the year and each one has an impact, but we're going to wrap it into that whole holistic level of really becoming a you know, warrior, more than a conqueror and uh, victorious in every way for the people that will be a part of it. We want you to be a part of it. So thank oh, you. Oh, I'm excited. This is uh, great. To my audience, uh, you've been blessed. I know. So uh, bless uh, yourselves by getting involved with uh, Valerie's team and the war planners and everything else that she has to offer you by going there. All the information is down below. You're going to see everything that you need to contact her and everything that's coming up with her events. And we will have her back. I promise you that because I'm sure you're going to be sending me comments that I want to hear more. Hopefully. <laughs> so, <laughs> until until we uh, see you at another podcast, listen to me. It is beauty and change that begins within you where Christ lives. Tap into that and you'll see transformation. Nothing else will matter and nothing else can make it happen except the renewal of your mind through Christ in you. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you on the next podcast.